Colored pencil continues to be a popular medium for artists, and there are so many styles and techniques out there for you to explore. I've definitely found some that are going to be my favorites, and so while Fur and Feathers Volume 1 gives uh, more of an overview of some of the more popular techniques, Fur and Feathers Volume 2 features primarily the ones that I enjoy using and that work for me. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how I use OMS, or Odorless Mineral Spirits, to blend. This is the brand I use, the uh, Gamblin Gamsol 100% Pure Odorless Mineral Spirits OMS. Okay, and then I put them into one of these water brushes. This particular brand I believe is Locanel, and they come in a set of three. You can see the three different nibs. They come with these little caps on them. Okay, you just untwist that. I usually I have these little pipettes, and I pull the spirits out, put them in here, twist that back on, and I'm ready to go. Now the reason why I use a water brush instead of just pouring this into a little saucer and using a regular brush is because just because it's odorless does not mean that it's not evaporating and is not a dangerous um, product. So to be safe for you, for your children, for pets, you do want to contain this OMS and this works out quite well for application. Just press up here, there's a little area, press it, squeeze it, and it drips out a little bit and you can, I'll show you how to use that. Now if you've got problems with squeezing them, some of them just seem to squeeze harder than others. Maybe you just have to um, soften the plastic a little bit or maybe you have to open up in here and make the hole that's inside a little bit larger. Um, but you really should have this odorless mineral spirits contained in some way. Now the clearest example of how this works is um, I used it in my book for in my book one to do the mask of JD and in book two I used it for the black of the loon the adult loon so you are just going to color with a medium medium pressure Okay, so you can see how long I am actually coloring and, you know, it's starting to cover, but the texture of the paper still isn't quite covered yet. So I will do this. I usually do start it over top of a, a paper towel or something like that. and. you just rub fairly aggressively actually over top and it turns into this beautiful smooth wonderful coverage which you would have to work a long hard time to get that look if you just colored and by the time you've done this you've got so much waxy buildup It'll be difficult to actually get anything else on top of it. If you want to add another color, plus you've used up an awful lot of your pencil and you have a lot of debris. You can see how easy that is. So this is a, ma um, a technique of blending. So, for instance, I've got magenta and I'm going to color and then have it fade and then I'm going to take this other cool color cobalt turquoise and I'm going to fade it this way 
Now this does work with light colors too, it's just that for purposes of demonstration, the darker, more vibrant colors work better. You can see it. You don't have to worry too much about overflow either. It's going to dry clear. Anything that's that's bled over it just dries no problem. Okay, so now you've got this blended. So one thing you do have to remember is that if you blend over say the black you are picking up black, so make sure that you get in the habit of wiping your brush before you go into a lighter area. So for instance on the eye, um, you can do the iris maybe first, wipe and then do the pupil, and then wipe so that when you go into the ears and things like that, that you uh, don't pick up color here and deposit it there. It's a little bit like a uh, watercolor uh, colored pencils, except that you don't have that out of control feeling. It really is very, very controlled. So now, how does it work for when you're actually coloring an animal? So for this little henna, this is the Ginger Snaps one, and she is the step-by-step -step worksheet in the book. Okay. So I've gone ahead and I've done the jasmine in here and the goldenrod. And those are the two colors that's going to give all these little ginger snaps their, um, their orangey coloring. So I'm just kind of coloring with the direction of the fur. Okay, I've already got the cream in there. So jasmine and goldenrod are there. Plus, I've done the ears, so that was an even coat or covering of peach. Okay, and then the shadow was chestnut. So you'd color it in and then you would fade this one because this is like a, a shadow, whereas these two are just, these two colors make the orange of her. And then you will get your OMS. And you just kind of rub. It's just sort of starting in the lighter area there. And then I'm going to work in towards the chestnut. Okay, like I say, it's not a um, a scary technique. If you drop a blop onto your piece, not a big deal. Just dries. Okay, so now we have it nice and shaded. And I can do this ear. And that's shaded. And then I will do the actual hair. Now you can see I don't have to gently stroke in the direction of the fur for this particular step. In fact, you're almost coloring across what you've already laid down so that you can really break it down and blend it. I can go over top of my markings a little bit more careful. It does travel a bit, but not scary at all. You let that dry and then you continue on with steps one and two. So this is just a technique that I just think is great. Works really really well for my animals, the fur but I'm planning on trying to do a little bit with, with uh, flowers and things like that as well. So 
it's going to be a technique that transfers very well. Just keep on pressing and blending. And I already have the shade underneath here. You see, just like fairly aggressive. There we go. It doesn't actually take all that long to dry. So if you want to redo a color or a layer, which is always good, you always want to start out a little bit on the light side and then build. Your artwork will be so much, so much better. And then your choice is you can, you could reapply the OMS if you want, or if you like the look of what you've got there and it's smooth and blended, you could leave it. You don't have to do this every single time. I just find that it helps blend. You get a softer, much softer look. A little bit more painterly, I guess. And you can layer and layer and layer. You can do this many, many, many times. So I hope um, I've helped you out a little bit using that, and I hope you enjoy using it as much as I do. Thanks.